For the past 15 years, I have been eating a high raw, high carb, low fat vegan diet and reaping the benefits daily. The following are some examples of what I typically eat in a day. I generally eat only one meal per day at around 2 p.m., though if I'm still hungry, we'll have another smaller meal or snack a few hours later. For people just switching to a vegan diet, however, I recommend eating as many meals or times per day as you care for, and to make sure you're eating a higher quantity of food than usual, because most plant foods are far less calorie dense than animal products, so you'll need to eat more than you're used to at first to stay satiated. Okay, I've got about two weeks of meals here to show you guys. On the first day, I've got right here, main course was that pineapple fried rice. Over here is the side salad with tomatoes, onions, peppers, potatoes, and lettuce, which I had with Italian dressing. Here we've got the glass noodle salad with some uh, soy protein sausage and cashews. Here is a pineapple smoothie, which was made from that fresh pineapple over there. And that is pineapple fried rice, again with the cashews and peppers and carrots. Delicious, nutritious, good stuff. And the next day we've got a Japanese theme here, starting over there with that mango smoothie. And here we've got Japanese white rice. It's a bit thicker than the usual jasmine rice. And a Japanese curry with potatoes, carrots, beans. Here we've got a few fried potatoes that was left over. And here we have a raw, fresh, spicy Thai cucumber salad. This is a Japanese style konjac noodle stir fry with bell peppers and some baby corn. Miso soup with a few veggies and garlic fried rice and that mango smoothie again. Couldn't finish that one all at once. Had to have a second mini meal of leftovers a few hours later. And here we've got our third day, starting in with that jasmine rice. That's usually the kind of rice I'll have. Sometimes go with the brown, but I just prefer going with the jasmine white rice. This is a, it's a sweet bell pepper stir fry with cashews. Here's that Thai style southern curry with stink beans. Sounds gross, but tastes great. This is a pomelo salad. Pomelo is a fruit, kind of like a giant grapefruit. And that is a grape smoothie. And that is some fake meat product made of mushrooms I was trying. Not so good. Next day we've got more jasmine rice and homemade fresh from scratch ravioli. Over there we've got uh, Penang curry with beans and carrots. That's a papaya salad and just a leftover meat thing from the other day. Fake meat, of course. And the next day we've got another pomelo salad. That's a coconut on the top there and cashews. This is a sour curry with, what do you got? Uh, cauliflower, carrots, baby corn and a stir fry, veggie stir fry, and the mango smoothie, once again, one of my favorites. Have that all the time. And on this day I had portobello mushrooms with mushroom gravy and button mushrooms in the mushroom gravy. It's a mushroom triple threat, delicious. It's kind of like steak, you know. Over here, baby corn, asparagus, and carrots. I had that with the gravy. Uh, mashed potatoes with almonds also had with gravy. And had these fried potatoes, french fries with ketchup. And the usual mango smoothie. Next day, we've got uh, jasmine rice, papaya salad, spicy. 
spicy staple salad raw. That's a cucumber stir fry. Uh, two types of fresh grapes. And another Penang. Penang curry. It's a spicy Thai curry. The next day went out to a restaurant and we've got quite a few dishes. This is a trio of salads. That is a sour curry with mushrooms and baby corn. We've got a coconut soup, coconut curry, tom kha. Uh, over there in the corner we've got sweet and sour stir fry. And the next day had stuffed bell peppers with fresh homemade tomato sauce. Uh, that's a fake vegan cheese and some fake meat in there with uh, rice stir fried in and the mango smoothie as always. I had about three of those. Made a whole pot of them. And the next day we've got uh, lemon and pineapple smoothie, cucumber salad, the southern Thai stink bean curry, a broccoli stir-fry, and a second smoothie was a grape smoothie. On this day we had Mexican theme, four homemade hot sauces to eat with homemade burritos. You can see them stuffed there with the rice, carrots, tomatoes, lettuce, and vegan cheese and vegan ham. And the next day we've got patkapao, which is a Thai spicy basil stir-fry over the jasmine rice. And we've got a boxed fusilli pasta with fresh tomato sauce and uh, some sweet potatoes. And this one, we've got a sour curry with carrots, beans, and cabbage, and another spicy southern Thai curry with pumpkins and jackfruit seeds. And I also had some type of fruit smoothie with that. And last but not least, had another plate of jasmine rice, mushroom cashew and bell pepper stir-fry, pomelo salad, cauliflower stir-fry, and a minestrone soup. Before switching to eating plant-based, I had chronic acid reflux since childhood and would regularly get strep or sore throats, colds and flus, nearly every few months. I had actually accepted this state of constant disease as normal until doing more research and experimentation for and on myself. After changing what I eat to a diet consisting of all plants and no animal products, both my chronic acid reflux and other regular ailments completely disappeared. In fact, I haven't fallen sick once in the past 15 years and have energy for days. For anyone interested in learning more about the benefits of veganism and why a plant-based diet is optimal, I recommend watching the documentaries Forks Over Knives, What the Health, The Game Changers, Earthlings, Vegucated, and Plant Pure Nation. If you would like to know why specifically a high-raw, high-carb, low-fat vegan diet, I recommend reading the books the 80-10-10 Diet by Dr. Doug Graham, and The Starch Solution by Dr. John McDougall. I have personally experimented with the various high-fat, low-carb diets in the past, both ones with and without animal products, such as the so-called Atkins, Paleo, Primal, Keto, etc., and have always had either negative results or only short-term positive results, which is typical in the experience of others as well because humans can only abstain from carbohydrates for so long. Every cell in our bodies runs on glycogen or glucose, which is a simple carbohydrate, and thereby the most vital macronutrient we ingest. We can transform fat stores into carbohydrates through ketosis, but this is much less efficient and harder on the body than getting our daily carbohydrate needs straight from fruits and starches. The 80-10-10 protocol 
suggests that the optimal macronutrient ratio is approximately 80% carbs, 10% fat, and 10% protein. Since all three are found in almost all foods, fulfilling the necessary fat and protein requirements is easy, while the difficult part is making sure you are getting enough healthy carbohydrate calories every day. I recommend using chronometer.com to get acquainted with the macronutrient ratios of foods that you eat. The following is a chart of the three tiers of staple carbohydrates people should understand. The top tier carbohydrate is the ultimate and perfect food for humans, which is fruit. Fruit means everything from apples and bananas, to berries and melons, to even more non-traditional fruits like cucumbers, tomatoes, peppers, and pumpkins. To achieve optimal health, the vast majority of your diet should consist of fresh fruit and fresh fruit smoothies. Most people eat far too little fresh fruit, and even most vegans, including myself to be perfectly honest, eat far too little. The second tier carbohydrates are plant starches in their natural form, which includes things like yams, potatoes, corn, rice, and oats. These are more complex carbohydrates than simple fruit sugars, which means they will take longer to digest and allow us to stay full for longer, but not quite as healthy or nutrient-rich as the first tier carbs. Ideally, if we eat enough from the first two tiers every day, we won't be as tempted to step down to tier three, which is complex carbohydrates modified from their original form, which includes things like flour, bread, pasta, pastries, crackers, cookies, cereal, etc. These are still high-carb, plant-based foods, but processed to the point of losing most of their nutrient value, and always with added fat and sugar. Fructose, natural fruit sugars, are the ideal simple carbohydrate and very healthy, but unnatural processed white sugar used in baking is not as good and should be limited. So tier 3 carbs should be eaten very sparingly, or not at all, while tier 2 carbs should be eaten moderately, and the tier 1 carbs should be eaten voraciously. Meanwhile, animal products, such as meat, dairy, and eggs, should be avoided completely, as they are devoid of fiber, highly acidic, fattening, cholesterol-laden, artery clogging, lymph clotting, mucus forming, and full of worms, parasites, bacteria, metabolic waste, hormones, and chemicals. It has to be mentioned that in the past five years, a few fringe fanatics have created the very worst diet trend imaginable and pushed it as allegedly being the healthiest way for humans to eat. These people almost always regurgitate the same rhetoric claiming that a whole foods plant-based diet is actually the New World Order diet, and insist that veganism is being pushed by shady elites to destroy humanity's health. I am speaking, of course, of the so-called carnivore diet, which recommends people eat the very opposite of a vegan diet, to abstain from all plant foods, and to eat only animal products. For starters, if any diet could be classified as the New World Order diet, it is undoubtedly this new, disgusting, unhealthy, and immoral carnivore diet, and not veganism, which has been around and proven itself for thousands of years, a morally consistent philosophy, and a nutrient-rich, healthy diet. There are certain corporations now starting, for example, to produce unhealthy fake vegan meat and fake vegan cheese products, but this is in response to the grassroots trend of veganism, costing them customers, and them needing to change their menus to keep up with demand. As for people like Bill Gates or the UN supposedly pushing a plant-based diet, this is only in direct response to their climate change agendas, which, as the documentary Cowspiracy showed, animal agriculture is the number one driving source behind the factors they claim are causing it. So to stay consistent, they must recommend a reduction in meat eating. As for health concerns, since an all-meat diet contains no fiber whatsoever, Certain people with certain chronic digestion issues may find temporary relief when first switching to carnivore, but over time will become more constipated and begin developing a host of other issues unless they incorporate a fair amount of fruits and other plant foods. My cousin is actually now recovering from his stint of eating the carnivore diet and has been recommended by a doctor to switch immediately to a vegan diet. Why? 
because after several months without eating any fruit, he developed scurvy. Scurvy is an old disease nearly eradicated from humanity until recently when this stupid carnivore trend began. Sailors at sea for months without fresh fruit would develop this disease centuries ago. When it was discovered to be a chronic lack of vitamin C, sailors began taking huge quantities of limes aboard with them, which they would eat to stave off scurvy. This resulted in them even getting the nickname Limeys. For anyone looking to switch to a vegan diet, be sure to research the books and documentaries I mentioned earlier. And if you would like to see examples of people eating even healthier than me, be sure to check out here on YouTube Marcus and Kara Rothkranz at The Healthy Life, and Freely the Banana Girl and her Raw Till 4 diet. I also have my own documentary, highly recommended, for anyone interested in this subject, called Stop Eating Your Friends.